everything you learned in history class was a lie. Well, maybe not everything, but they skipped the best parts. Introducing Stupiracy, where stupidity meets conspiracy. Ever heard of the Olympic marathon that nearly killed its runners? Or the time a pope put another pope's corpse on trial? Join me, Scott Rizzuto, and Tim McKernan as we uncover the most outrageous historical moments and mind-blowing conspiracies you won't believe actually happened. Tune in to Stupiracy for your weekly dose of historical absurdity. Available wherever you get your podcasts. Remember, history is dumb, but laughing at it is smart. Okay. Did I ever tell you guys my boat story? No. I think I've told Reavers off the air. I should tell Patrick Not the, boat the one story. about building the one that took like six years, right? No, this is a normal Sea okay, Ray 18 foot fiberglass speedboat. You're boat. out on the lake. No, no, okay. no, no, Pat. Uh, I bought it 15 years ago. Okay. I'm the original owner, and I told the kids last year, the kids I used to have, look, nobody ever uses this thing. I'm going to sell it. And I didn't meet any opposition. So yes. this this spring, I, I had it sold. The, the, the check was could have been in my pocket. Mm-hmm. And I, I announced this triumphantly, I think, at home. And all that she says is, well, you better tell the kids. <laughs> so I said, well, so I call uh, Illinois, and they went through the roof. How could you do this, you moron? It's the summer of COVID. These kids don't have leagues. They don't have anything. <laughs> We're going to use that boat all the time. And in my mind, I'm going, they'll never use nope, it. Never then the local, the, the youngest kid could doesn't have a drop of lake water mm-hmm. and she didn't care but the middle kid and her family they, they raised the same stake are you out of your mind what a stupid decision you got to keep that boat we're going to use it all summer that's where May f- is it right now at the time of the no i'm getting there at pat the time, just yeah. i'm going to tell you the story okay <laughs> you know you already want to know where it is that's part of the story no no but i want to know where line. i'm saying at this point of the story it's in storage it? in, in okay. storage out of okay. white bear all right uh uh friend of mine, Jason Brown's got it, White Bear Boat Works. Okay. And, and so he, he's the one who brokered the sale. And now I got to call him back and say, Jason, I'm, I'm sorry, man. I, my kids went nuts. I got to keep that boat. They're going to use it all summer. He goes, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. I understand. Uh-huh. And then, uh, so that's about May 15th. And we well, yet. <laughs> uh, we get to about June 15th, yeah. and the kids in town say, yeah, we're going to put her in today. We're going to use it. Mm-hmm. Well, that was one. If you'll recall, in mid-June, we had some horrifically windy days. Mm-hmm. Not storms, just yeah. really howling 40-mile-an-hour winds. Which I love, by the way. I didn't mind. So mm-hmm. they launch it on that day, and their their only use of it consisted of clinging to the boat for their lives as they <laughs> crawled around the shoreline <laughs> Trying to stay in the lee of the of these four foot waves, they limped it over to my <laughs> limped it over to my sister's house, who was and they were kind enough to offer a hoist, but it proved terribly inadequate. It was rickety, and it's not their fault. But that got the boat about six inches out of the water, and then those hellacious winds c- yeah. continued all week, beating the holy hell out of the boat, uh, no. rubbing it up against the pipes, the whole thing. I I finally told the, the uh, husband of the kid I used to, have, you got to go get that thing you gotta rescue it Mm -hmm. and he did and then it sat here at my house all Uh, dead in the hell well i i fixed it it's it's okay Okay. so then it sits here yeah and the weeks go by (laughs) and (laughs) it doesn't get used Mm -hmm. and on july 2nd here we go it got picked up to go up north and it got used for Two and a half days. Okay. And then on Sunday the 5th, it's getting hauled back here. Mm-hmm. And as it's, pa- and I'm not part of this. I'm long since gone. Mm-hmm. As it gets to Onamia, the right rear trailer tire sh- explodes. <laughs> it does, it's not flat. It, 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 it shredded. Boom. It just shredded off the rim. The rim gets dented. Uh, the dude driving the truck did a hell of a job. He Nobody got hurt. He brought it to a safe landing. But now the boat's halfway in a ditch. And they got to call... <laughs> They gotta find a flatbed truck 
to come and get this damn thing, and they did. And I'm going to give a shout-out to the people at the Onamia Service Center. Boy, were they great guys. So they send out a tow truck and a wrench or a winch and a flatbed, and they haul this thing into town, and then there it sat for two weeks. Okay. The guy called me. We had a few conversations. He said, well, the, the one rim is can't use that. That got destroyed. Sure. And as long as we're changing one tire, we better do two. And I said, you're right. And he said, well, I can't find a rim, so I'll find you two matching rims. So, okay, so now we're two matching rims mm-hmm. and two new tires. Now, I, said I suppose, that, I imagine the people who were using the boat are picking up the tab. For all of this. <laughs> no. <laughs> the people who blew up the tire oh, are not picking up the tab. God, for this. So, in the meantime, in the meantime... The, the oldest kid I used to have says, I, I'm, I want the boat. I'll take it. I'll okay. Ta- okay. I said, that's fine. For, what's it given to him? I'm, I'm giving it to him. Okay. I said, but that means you're taking on insurance. You're taking on yeah, maintenance. Right, you're sure. taking on storage and on and on and on and on. Well, he thinks he's got some insider chance to get a slip on Lake Michigan, which are uh, rare as hen's teeth. So if he does, great. Okay. So when's he coming here? The boat, I, the boat got back from Onamia last Friday, mm-hmm. and now it's sitting here. It'll sit here till I won't believe that he'll take it until it's gone and in, in out of this state. I won't believe it. Well, is it back to the boat works or is it in your driveway? No. So yeah. It's at my house. It's, it's at my house. <laughs> You're looking at it even as we speak. In yeah. Other words. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, every time one of these incidents happen, I just think. I could have had eleven grand in my pocket. Yeah, for a fifteen-year-old boy. Yes. I thought I got it was a hell of a price, and mm-hmm. I knew, I knew it would never get touched. I knew it, but you can't tell them that. So that's my boat story. On a smaller, it's a real scale. first world problem. It's on a real a, first world problem. On a smaller scale, I was looking for something that I knew was somewhere in the house. I can't even remember what it was, but I rummaged through several storage rooms and stuff trying to find this Mm -hmm. and i found at least three or four brand new items that had never been open (laughs) including the vcr plus that we had to have 15 years ago we got the vcr plus never taken out of the package what was the added feature with the plus i I think it was something to assist in the taping. I'm ah. not sure. I think before you could order up future stuff, this okay. you could do something like How would I know? It was never open. <laughs> You'd probably sell it on eBay as a collector's <laughs> item. Uh, there was all kinds of stuff in packages. and uh, Nothing beat. Of course, never found what I was looking for. Nothing but. beat the time Rook uh, went down to the Royce estate. And found the collection of tools that were still in the packaging. <laughs> oh yes, down at the at the yeah, down in Fort. We Miami, have yeah. wrenches. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to be a retailer's dream, man. When you come strolling yes. in. Not me. I don't buy any of this stuff. She bought. She, she bought tools. Why? No, no wonder why, why? Fratelloni goes. Tell Royce to hit up this store. We're, we're a little behind in Unless sales. Unless you plan to do something with them. Don't buy them because you know I'm not going to. Do- I would like a pliers and a screwdriver, and I would like to know where but, to find those because but, if it's a very simple screw, I can put no, it in. No, you can't, Roycey. You hired somebody to replace a toilet seat. Yes, that's I did. two simple <laughs> screws. I I hired somebody to do that because I didn't want to get down on my back. Underneath the toilet, and then have to call the fire department to get me up. That's why. <laughs> That's why I did that. Uh-huh. They, 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 I don't hop up to my feet. So, too did well. you go through the yellow pages, or did you have a guy that you knew? Oh, I had a guy. Okay, I had right. a guy. Yeah, a guy. My handyman in uh, in Florida. Okay. Who, by the way, I sent the cleaner in yesterday to find out if anything's going on. We've had a worm invasion again, so I have to oh. those little worms. So I have to get uh, a new thing on the bottom of the door to keep them from coming in. Even though I had them, I've changed that about six different times. So anyway, there. I <sighs> once was complaining to the uh, the Hispanic gardener out in front, and I said, "How do these get in? What the hell's going on?" And the guy <laughs> said, "They're worms." <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what that's they what do. They do. <laughs> that's, that's all what they, they do. do. They want to go where you are. They want to go someplace else. They're worms. If they yeah. want to, if they want to go there, they're gonna go there. They're worms, dummy.
Yeah. Oh, man. Roycey, I thought of you over the weekend okay. uh, because you're one of the few guys that I know that really enjoys a good cheater. So yeah. uh, I'm, I'm at Viking Speedway, and I snuck my way into the infield, and there's a gal in there who's racing uh, street stocks. Her name is Megan something. And I'm watching her out on the track, and she's really good, and she's skillful, but she's a very, very clean racer okay and she doesn't do it she, like when you're uh, when you're coming around the track for the green flag and before the green flag flies you're up in uh you're up in three and four a lot of guys cheat and they move mm -hmm. up a position before the green you know and sure. i was cheering for that and i started analyzing this and thinking boy i really hate it when guys i hate cheat but when people i love cheat, don't cheat it makes me mad and i'm wondering so does that relate to other sports? Do you, like if somebody you really, really hate in ball cheats, do you come down hard on them, or does that make you love them even more? No, well, we were talking about this. Uh, for instance, this kid from Maple Grove who plays basketball for Duke, Brad Davison, who's a semi-talented kid, but he'll trip you, he'll knee in the groin, he'll take the <laughs> yeah. flop. And yeah. I kind of like him. Yeah. But if he played yeah. for Duke, I'd hate him. Because yeah. you know? yes. he's not the, the, yes. the Duke rich kid flopper. I hate those guys. But Davison, he's just a miserable little, you know, he was like a three-sport guy at uh, Maple Grove. Great quarterback. Shouldn't be playing Division One basketball, but he basically fought his way in there. And, you know, you know, you if you were an eight-year-old kid, he'd trip you. I'm sure he was knocking guys out of the way when he was six, you know, thinking of tipping over their wagons and crap, you know. And I, I kind of like him, but uh, he doesn't play for Duke. If he played yeah. for Duke, I'd if hate him. If he played him. for Duke, you'd have a tie ah, I can't stand Duke. Yeah. Uh, you know what my all, Duke hatred goes like. back to? Hmm. They're playing Louisville. We got... You remember Tracy Austin, the, the great tennis player, right, Joe? Mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. You know, she's like a... 16-year-old protege from uh, Rolling Hills, California. Mm -hmm. Rich, 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 rich suburb. You know, started taking le tennis lessons when she was three. And Jay Billis from Duke lived like two doors down. So he's yeah. a rich kid from Rolling Hills. He's now on TV all the time. But he was playing for that first Duke team to go to the Final Four for Shevsky, mm -hmm. And they're just a bunch of... You know, but three of them are white. I hate white basketball players anyway. They, don't, they shouldn't even be playing the game. You know. Anyway. Uh, Larry Bird. Yeah, yeah, well, Bird, I liked him because he was a dummy. You know, you know, he, you know he, he got 12 on his AC, you know, on his uh, SAT. But, you know, what liked, about Kevin McHale? Yeah, I liked him too, but, right. but you know, because he... But anyway. Randy Brewer. Anyway, the anyway. Dukies have all these jerks. And meanwhile, but they're, you know, they come to the press conferences and they're funny and they're articulate. And, and meanwhile, they're playing Louisville, which has Milt Wagner and Billy Thompson, who grew up in Camden, New Jersey, with rats running across their head, you know, in the middle of the ghetto. And all these guys are saying aren't those two kids great all these guys and i man i was so i was so fired up for louisville to kick their ass which they did so i was very happy That's can i ask you a question back to what? okay can i ask you a question yeah where does tracy austin fit into this she was a neighbor of jay billis oh i thought maybe there were some contra no, temps no 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 i was trying to say that's where the neighborhood of this we're supposed to be impressed because of our articulate this wimp yeah. is he went to yeah. private school from the age of two yeah. you know <laughs> so anyway. when you were a, when you were a kid and you were playing ball did you throw the occasional elbow you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I was a If you were in football, no, did you in, hit in him at the knees? Basketball, oh, football. I just hoped I'd get hurt so I didn't have to play it. I was a coward. <laughs> you know. And, uh, but I, yeah, you know, Kenny, 19, late 1950s, you had to play football else. Right. You know, they. Or you uh, were labeled. Oh, yes, you were. Yes, you yeah. were. No, it, it mm -hmm. was we didn't the know same what to me. call it back yeah. then, but it wasn't. Uh, right, right. You know, uh, uh, your, yeah, manhood that's was, why I, your manhood was in question. That's why I had to play football yes. too. I just you, you, did, you just didn't have a choice. You, you know, yeah. Pat, with a statement like "I don't like white basketball players," that's no, very I, I, woke. That's joking. very woke for 2020. I'm you, being very. I know you no. are. 
I uh, used to make fun of it. Back in the day, 30 years ago, when you could write something of it. You can't I, have humor now, Pat. Oh, no, I know. I remember I said it. Like, something like the white point guard is a social disease of basketball or something <laughs> like that. You know, right? Like, uh, something like that. I, I hope nobody ever finds that. But Was uh, that the topic you said you had today? No. The I Duke? have another topic, even more controversial. Oh, boy. All right. I heard your commentary on Miss Omar. Yes. Oh, Lord. And I will admit a few things, okay? Mm hmm. She's a bit of a whack job. Yep. And she hasn't been, I would say she hasn't been completely honest with her matrimonial and romantic adventures. That's right. correct. I think there's a little, little some hijinks going on there. And I, I do think yeah. she is probably more worried about her national profile. Mm -hmm. Then she is what's going on back here in North Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. That said. Oh, I hate that term. That but go ahead. said. Yep. She's got two things in her favor. Yep. She's kind of cute. Mm -hmm. And Trump hates her. <laughs> <laughs> and she drives Trump nuts. Yeah. So that kind of puts her. And I, I kind of like that. You're telling me you like her chances again. At the polls, the voting booth. I yeah, I don't know how much. Uh, I I did see an ad for the other guy today, but I I would guess she's going to win, wouldn't you? But uh, I do agree. What are you whining about? By whining about the amount of money that guy mukes. is spending, you're drawing attention to him, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's she. She should have just. She should have ignored him. Kind of like when uh, Howard Stern came to town I and, knew this was and started to bitch about Bernard. It never and, got and anywhere, Bernard did he? Bernard ignored him, and pretty soon Howard was gone. So yeah, I, she yeah. should have ignored this guy, right? Yeah. 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 Anyway. What's Keith Ellison? How, why is he introducing himself to us? I don't know why us? he is. He's, uh, he's kind of an activist as the attorney general. I'll say yeah. that. Yeah. I'll say that. But uh, I, I kind of liked him, though, because he could he – could, he could stir up a chaos in a, in a nunnery, for goodness sakes. But uh, do you, I kind of Do you him. think he's uh, in Antifa's pocket, Pat? No, I don't think Antifa's got any money. They don't have any money. A bunch of hey, they're my buddies. I met them in Washington at the at the CBS. Oh, man. that's right. Yeah. I completely I forgot was hanging about out that. With the Antifa's after the. When I was out there last year on July 4th. Because you went weekend, in to get a Diet Coke. Went in to get a Diet Coke, and there was an Antifa baby behind me. And there were five buddies were sitting on the floor over there. And then she had the mask on, you know, but she looked kind of cute. And, uh, you know, I've said this, I've told this story, and I said, So, ma'am, who won the protest today? And, you know, 73 year old white guy, who won the protest today? Because I was in the hotel right next to the protest. Went out and watched it for a while. And uh, and she said, I don't think anyone's going to win the protest until we get rid of all the fascists. Oh, yeah. And then I said, well, okay, it's hot out there. Be sure to hydrate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, speaking of uh, Washington, D.C., your thoughts on the Nationals inviting and Fauci, Fauci to <laughs> throw out the first pitch. Yeah. Isn't that a great touch? Oh, man. Was that... Uh, yeah, that was a that was a degree of agitation. But I believe they did invite the Trumper last year or the first time the first year, right? He was president in seventeen and he turned it down. Okay. Yeah. Because for the presidential opener, I think they I think they invited didn't he throw didn't he throw out the ball last year at the I thought he did, World and I thought Series, it was a right? pretty good a pretty good toss too. Was it, if I was it the World right. Series or one of the playoff games? I think he did. I think he played baseball. Yeah, he yeah. did. Yeah. He did. Not as well as uh, George Bush Sr., but he did play baseball, right. I think, at some private school. Did you go to see the Twins work out yesterday, yes, which is I why did. we're recording right. Monday yeah. Night Sports Talk on Tuesday? Yes, I went. It's their last, it was their last inner squad at home and uh, before they head off to Chicago. And you know what? It's five innings was all they played, but it's kind of fun because there's players that you care about. Their good pitchers are pitching to their hitters, and they split up the two teams, and it was kind of good. Where did you have to sit? Press box. And you, uh, they Could you have gone you, into the stands if you wanted to? They don't want you to. No, oh. they, in fact, they had them sealed off pretty oh. much. And the photographers, well, I guess, yeah, the photographers are taking photos from the upper, from the photo stand 
in the second deck there, I guess. So, yeah, mm -hmm. they, but they, uh, when I was leaving, I got on the elevator that went down to the main floor instead of the, uh, the, all the way down to the basement where we get out of that place. And uh, I thought, okay, I'll just go down here and walk down the steps. And they had the steps blocked off, and they had everything else blocked off there. They don't, uh, they are not prepared for a crowd to show up right now, I'll tell you that. Well, starting Friday, do we get radio and TV like it's a real year? Yes, but they're all at, uh, they're all be doing their broadcast. Well, Wednesday night you probably do, right, Phil? Uh, Phil? Chris, uh, is that game think is that so. game on yeah, TV? I, I, I think, think no, I think it's on radio for sure because I saw the. I think they're on TV too. Okay, who the, who the, the Twins and the Cubs have an exhibition game on Wednesday night? Oh yeah, and then uh, yeah Friday, but but both the ra the the TV guys are doing uh, games from home from their own TV booth. Uh, I mean road games. They aren't traveling with the teams either. The even the TV crew or the radio crews aren't traveling with them. The twins didn't oh. want them. The twins didn't want them traveling. And I don't know if you guys saw this, but they put out a promotional video, and I think they must do this every time that the twins and Cubs play one another, but to get people hyped up for the matchup. I'll tell you one thing. I hope we get harder and just to stuff it up them three thousand people that show up every day because if they're the real Chicago fans, they can kiss my. They're really, really behind you around here. Oh. My <laughs> the mother <laughs> they, they don't work. They go to the game. They're That's my favorite line. Find out what it's like to go out there. Hey guys, the world's working. The other fifteen come out here. The playground for the guys busting their people through. And what's the cut? My. They talk about the great. Support that the players get around here. I haven't seen it this year. The name of the game is hit the ball, catch the ball, and get the job done. Right now, we have more losses than we have wins. Yep. All right, yep. they don't show because we're five and fourteen. And unfortunately, that's the criteria of them dumb fifteen mother. <laughs> I will never forget when I played that for my old man, and I thought I'd have to take him to the hospital. I really did. I had the pleasure of doing that for my roommate here a couple of weeks ago. I played her that and the Earl Weaver, uh, You're Trying to Bleep Us tirade. Boy, was she happy to hear that. She laughed and laughed so and laughed. Help you think, Lee Ilya got called up to the office after that one and said, <laughs> you know, we play all our game, all our home games are played during the day, Lee. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we yeah. don't have lights. He was ripping the people who bought tickets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's what some year? great ones. Was that 70s, oh, 80s? It has to be well, 70s. It was the 70s. Right? Okay. The 70s. Yeah. Uh, oh. yeah. I wonder if Verdi was there. If I could, if I, I should see if I got Verdi's phone number and call him and ask him if he was there for that one. You think they used that as a motivator in the 2016 <laughs> World Series? Let's go win one for Lee. That's better than Burnsy's. Oh, God, yeah. That's okay. better than Burnsy's. That's Come the up. best of all time. Because Burnsy pretty much just went with F-bombs. Yeah. yeah, you know this guy. Okay, this guy, this guy mixed up his mixed up his <laughs> profanities. I mean, okay, this is this is a good topic. Give me the top five right now in order mm. of tirades. Yeah, Lee oh, Lee being number one. Lee's number Who's, one. Burns yeah. top five, and Weaver. There's probably about five of them from Weaver, but uh, you yeah, got you got a, <laughs> the, the famous one. How'd they get was. Was Luciana or was Bill Haller mic'd? He must have been mic'd, huh? Yeah. Or we, Earl wasn't mic'd. So. Mock, no. what, Mock would have tirades, but they were silent because he seethed. Mm -hmm. He just seethed well, or I turned was, over a table of I food. Was, uh, <laughs> I was covered a game in D Dallas, on a, I mean, Arlington on a, on a Saturday night when he threw all the stuff out of the dugout. Oh, yeah. Threw yeah, all the bats. And he liked to throw the bats. and then he Didn't Weaver grab, like, first base or home plate or oh, something? Oh, yeah. yeah, he yeah. Did Walk that. off. Yeah. Talk, yeah. Took it away. No, well, the, night, <laughs> the night that uh, – the night they – the night they delayed the game to drown the moth in Butch Weininger's ear, which uh, is my favorite event ever, and we were Bill, uh, Bobby Brown was the uh, 
PA guy in the press box, greatest PR guy of all time, and he was giving us updates on the condition of the moth. Yeah. You know, <laughs> still wiggling around in there, haven't been able to drown it. And Earl, after about five minutes, come, he went out and went nuts. And he, you know, he said, "Come on, let's get the game going." And the ump said something to him, and pretty soon it was just an absolute Earl, <laughs> Earl tantrum. And he ended up that day laying down on his back between home plate and the pitcher's mound, and yeah. they had to get security and carry him out like like a corpse. That is beautiful. <laughs> oh, he was crazy. He was wonderful. Oh God. Um, that, so I watched his Hall of Fame acceptance speech, hoping that he'd make some reference to his tirades, and I, I got ten minutes. It's in and got bored because it was so polite. Oh, he tried to nice. be a gentleman, yeah. Yeah. I but wasn't that gentleman. part of the, the Bill Heller meltdown? He said uh, something yeah, about Hall of Fame. How, yeah. what, what are you going to get in for, for bleeping up a World Series? <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. that's when yeah. he was walking away and Earl turned around. <laughs> he came back for came back. Earl came back at that point. Yes. Yeah. God. <laughs> and I thought he'd somehow dedicate it to Haller, but he didn't bring him up. Mm-hmm. And so, I love the Laurel and Hardy aspect of Earl because they, he, a little he, tiny said, guy, yeah. he said to Haller, I'm going to write a letter to the league office. Haller said, you go ahead. Earl said, and don't think I won't. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, you know, Brooks Robinson was on his last legs. And they let him stick around for one season. He wasn't playing all the time. And then they got, they were in Minnesota. They were at Met Stadium. Joe, you might have been out there. And they needed a roster spot, and Brooks wasn't doing anything. And they had, on Sunday morning, they announced Brooks' retirement at Met Stadium. That was 1980. Was it Was it 80? Okay. Yep. And Earl was in the dugout, and he hadn't slept. Mm-hmm. He had been up all night. Because oh. he had a couple of Minnesota buddies. The guy who, uh, Tommy Peebles, who was a bartender at Ichabod's. Yep. Remember Ichabod's downtown? Yep. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Tommy was a bald bald guy, and he knew all the baseball. The baseball players used to drink there. And he's long sober. I don't know if he's still with us. But but he and Tommy Peebles have been up drinking all night. And Earl, Earl was like, he was talking, smoking heaters, talking about how great Brooks was, and you were afraid he was going to tip over and fall on his head at any moment. <laughs> oh. It was great. Damn, I loved him. Why are you yeah. walking bleeping Danny Ford? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, he was great. He so was now great. I, I hear you and Reavers have turned the turned the tide, and now you're looking forward to this shortened season. Well, I'm looking you're forward into to watching yeah. some baseball. I do think it's uh, I do think it's a uh, you know an illegitimate exercise in determining a champion and stuff like well, that. I do too. But, uh, I you do can't too. blame them for. I guess if. I, this is actually their season. You can't if everybody else is playing three months after there's two months after their season should have ended, I suppose right. baseball deserves to be at this playing. point I don't care. I just want to watch some ball. What are we gonna do next month though? We're gonna have, August second, you're gonna have the wild fighting for their lives and the twins playing and I guess we can ignore Viking camp. I can't anyway. But if only well, I had a VCR plus to record all these extra right. games, I might be able to find you one. <laughs> what I don't, I don't get, it, what is what does the NHL think they're doing? Doesn't their season usually when does when is the preseason? They're it's all, usually uh, sub, yeah, September, well, right? They're going to probably somebody thinks they're going to start at January first next year. They're going to just have it. Oh. Kenny, they get more money now. The NF, NHL doesn't get a lot of TV money. Hello. But they, Hey, keep, Hello. Going. Keep, going. keep going. We Are go through. There? We go through this once. Kenny, in a while. the NHL doesn't get a lot of TV money, but most of their TV money is directed. I'm dead here. No, nope, you're okay. okay. You're okay. We go through this uh, one. And the <laughs> NBA, all of their, you know, that's the, the okay. NBA is all about TV money. So the all NBA right. will probably start a restart next year on Christmas Day, which has kind of been their big day. And uh, and the NHL will probably start on January first. They think uh, those. Uh, they think these playoff games that they're going to be playing now are way more important than the first 30 games of the next regular season. So that's why. I don't know if it, maybe it's the fair weather fan in me coming out, but I would love it if the NHL always started January 1st. I think that'd be great. <laughs> we don't need that long ass season. Yeah, but they need the gate more than yeah, any yeah, other. More than any other league, the NHL needs the gate. Well, they reduce right. the number of games. Oh yeah, they'll probably play. I don't think they'll. 
they might try to play 60 next year, but that yeah. might be heavy. They might might end up playing 50. Yeah. Go back to the old days when they had a 50-game season. Yep. Way back in the old days when they had a six-team league. and uh, That was... Uh, Say, I Kenny, had some Kenny. fun writing about Halliburton uh, this week, the uh, Louie and Tom Reeves. Yeah, my, I saw that. Wren telling, telling stories about Wren. The one I liked best was uh, Goldie goes to town, and Louie says, Goldie, you just couldn't keep him down all the time. So he goes to town, and Blair's knows he's in town, and he gets the eight, nine guys that had, not players, but staff members and everything that have cars, and they kind of park hiding in the woods along the path and then then they was as goldie stumbling back up the path at 11 30 at night they turn on the lights like he's <laughs> like she's a prisoner trying to escape in hogan's heroes and, <laughs> and, and blair's screaming this is gonna cost you money goldsworth <laughs> Where is Halliburton? Uh, it's uh, two. Uh, it's over a little over two hours northeast of Toronto, but it's one of the cotty lakes all over the place. Oh yeah, and it's uh, there's some place that's to the little bit to the west, Buskaka or something that's been the famous cottage country place, but now Halliburton is like number two on that list. Well, the famous cottage country is Muskoka Lakes. Muskoka, that's yes, yeah, that's what yeah. I would say. That, yeah. That's what that's the the famous one, and people who can't f- afford Muskoka, which is most of them now, yeah. uh, a lot of them have made it to Halliburton and other places around you. Because going to the cottage is a bigger deal there than it is going to the lake in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Well, I've got coffee table books on Muskoka. You're di- it's, I, if I got there, it'd be, I'd be dying and going to heaven. It's just it's, amazing. It's not far from the big lake either, is it? Oh, it's, no. It's, no. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, so, I, I looked at the... Uh, so Bobby Orr, when he got yanked out of his bed and, at the age of nine to go play hockey... Red Blair was his, he, that he, made he, Ren he, famous. Perry Sound, he would have had to go uh, east past the Muskoka Lakes and down to Toronto. Yeah. If only a guy had a boat to put on Muskoka Lakes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know that Wren couldn't I got one. You know that Wren was the coach general manager of the North Stars, the discoverer of Bobby Orr and he could not skate. Wren could not skate? Could not skate. I did not know that. He would get all dressed up in like his white coaching jacket mm-hmm. and then go out there and stand on that stick like his life was in danger and <laughs> curse at everybody. He'd wear metal cleats in baseball so he wouldn't fall over. I've told you this story. I can't remember how it happened, but they're playing St. Louis in the playoffs and Wren is still running the team. And they got a Saturday night. I, this is not the first or second year. This is the early 70s. And Ren, so, but Ren only ran him, what, till 70, 71, something like this. So it's in there. And somehow, Saturday night playoff game, and well, it had to be 70 or 71, because I think I was the puppet sports editor by then. <laughs> the most ill equipped sports editor in the history of man. But Augie and I ended up in Ren Blair's office with Parker McDonald. Mm hmm. Ren Blair, Augie and I, three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> point two nine, <laughs> and, and gonna, they got a game like at one the next afternoon. Now Ren's the GM though, but it's it's just we we just sit there and listen to Ren for like two hours, and what I always remember is. He all of a sudden goes across the round the room and says, Who's the greatest hockey player of all time? And I knew about Ren and Bobby Orr. So, oh, Bobby Orr, you know, so that Ren liked that. And uh, and Parker McDonald says, I'd have to say Gordy Howe. And Ren jumps up out of his <laughs> chair and says, You better see Gordy Howe. You better say Gordy Howe because you weren't worth a bleep. Bleep and bleep. You were a piece of bleep and bleep. 
and you scored 40 <laughs> goals because you played with Gordie Howe. Yeah. If you didn't play with Gordie Howe, you wouldn't have scored 40 goals in your life, so you better bleep and bleep sing. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a tape of that one. Poor oh, Parker was like backed up. And <laughs> <laughs> they were nuts back then. Van Brocklin, you know, the first Van Brocklin was completely insane, the first yeah. Viking coach. Blair was insane. Yep. You know, and uh, I, I guess the twins, you know, twins, Billy Martin was insane. He was only oh, here boy, one yeah. year, but uh, he was only here one year. But he'd been a coach. He'd been a coach since 66 or something. So he'd been around. Yeah, they had a lot of nutcases back then, man. Yes, they did. But getting back to this baseball now, it's yes. going to be on the radio, but yes. the, the guys are going to be here. Yeah, Gladdy and Provis are going to be here. Gladdy, uh, the other teams apparently – some teams are sending their radio announcers, but they've been discouraged from it because uh, other teams don't want to be opening up their press boxes and doing stuff like, you know, to to put more people in the press box, which is all the biggest bunch of crap in the history of mankind. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, you know, the fact that you have uh, 50 people in the press box instead of 40 is not going to change whether somebody gets the virus or not. But mm-hmm. these guys are, these guys are, you know, any, it's like the NFL, no handshakes. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's fine. In the meantime, you can lay on each other in a pile. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Kick each other. Such, are, 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 are you put off by the fact that they're not going to be there? Yeah. The broadcast team? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's going to sound funny. It's actually a little-known secret among other sports where sometimes the announcers don't step in and do their jobs until it's the event is over, and they call it while watching a tape. A lot of snowmobile races, motorcycle races, car races are done that way. Tape if- I, I first learned this a long, long time ago working with Curtsy, and Curtsy, I was working a, a gopher game with him, and he said, well, i got to fly to California to uh, call a, a volleyball match that they played yesterday <laughs> i'm like wait a, wait a minute what and he goes yeah we just sit in the studio and record it and uh, i get my check and away we go so and if you know what happened you can you look really smart can you can project can't you yeah. yes. i just have yeah. a sense here that we're gonna score you know <laughs> kenny is that the same trip where uh kurtz told you to Sleep that one off under the in the in the yeah, broadcast let's, booth. Uh, let's let's not bring that. Were you a What were you a producer for what? Uh, for Gopher games, uh, hockey and basketball, oh. and uh, the station made the mistake of sending me up to Duluth, <laughs> okay, and uh, for a UMD versus the Gophers, and uh, I spent the entire afternoon just pouring the booze <laughs> down my gullet. And uh, during during the periods, I was actually laying on the floor. Yeah, so. that's that's great. I, uh, one of my favorite Kurtz, I think it was Kurtzy. I, Tom Reed was doing the Gopher Color, and it was the early '80s, in Duluth. That wasn't the weekend when it was like 100 below, was it, Kenny? It was winter. I was uh, up there uh, once when I was 110 below, and we went outside and started our cars between periods. Wow, it was yeah. so hot, uh, cold, but. It went. This was when you played overtime. You know, you yeah. played a game tied. You played overtime. Uh, they were going into the second overtime, and they were hard up for guess. Reed gets me on after the first period. You know, cause, and he says, "What would you do to improve the game of hockey?" I said. <laughs> Well, you know, I'd start by melting all this ice. <laughs> and then I'd put one big tall basket down at one one post down at one side and put a basket on it. And then down at the other side I'd do the same. And then I'd yeah, and then I'd get a bigger ball so we could all see it. That's what I do to them. I said the big problem is you can't see the puck. We gotta get a bigger ball. That oh, would work. Yeah. And Reed's looking at me like I'm insane, but it's like yeah. It's like eleven o'clock on a Saturday, and I can't get anything in the paper anyway. So Friday, uh, it night. was a lot of fun working with those two. Oh, Reed's, man, I learned Reed's a, a great lot. Guy. Yeah, yeah. One I was best. talking to uh, Walt McKechnie, who still lives in Halliburton, and I said after I talked to Reed about this piece, and I said, Reed, I said, Reed says hello. I got your number from Reed. Reed says hello, and he said. Number one bleep disturber of all time in yeah. hockey, Reed. Yeah. So I texted Reed and said that. I said, well, McKechnie says, and Reed's response is, don't believe 
anything they say. <laughs> <laughs> One time I was hanging out in the locker room with those yeah. guys, off day, trying to get yes. a column. And I just, suddenly we just started playing this game, how cold was it when you were a kid? What was the coldest ever? Oh, yeah. And Reed said, well, it was so cold that the streetlight shattered. And I think he was just making stuff up because he would just, it was so cold, trains couldn't start. It was so, you know, on and on and on and on. As I look back on it, I bet he never told me one true line <laughs> in the whole deal. Boy, you look back, though, those early years. Moose Vasco, Leo Boyvin, Bob McCord, Gump, yep. all those. I mean, they had some beat up old Hellraisers, man. Yep. I guess that McCord was crazy. Moose was all he wanted to do was drink beer. Yeah. And but they, the sight that I want to see that they all talk about is when they were Gump didn't join them until they were training in Winnipeg. Mm-hmm. But they had a better facilities and they had a little track every day. So they would have to, after practice, they'd have to go outside and run a couple of laps around this track. And Gump would go out there in a track suit, wearing his street shoes, smoking a cigarette, and taking a, <laughs> taking a fairly paced walk around. <laughs> Gump, Gump would walk resolutely, having a cigarette, as he did his laps in his street shoes. And Moose, when he was there, would accompany him, apparently. There was a great story about Gump when he was with the Rangers. The Rangers had a bad... Uh, practice facility that had tin boards mm-hmm. and Gump says I could never stand that sound of that puck hitting the tin because he was hung over all the time <laughs> and he said and, the, and he said the rink was slanted uh, and so people were skating uphill to shoot at him and they'd miss and hit that tin <laughs> and he just said I got to get out of here I can't take this tin noise anymore it was driving him crazy <laughs> you were about you know think about this league in the 50s before mm-hmm. expansion mm-hmm there were six goaltenders right. in the world. Right. Nobody had a backup goaltender. You played you, every game. And you'd you get them out of the stands. You'd get them out of the stands. Yeah. You, you didn't yeah. wear a mask. Yeah. There were six of them. Yeah. I was in Fulda, Minnesota. I could give you the name of the six goaltenders in the NHL. Cause there were Who was the six. first goaltender to wear a mask? Jacques Plante, wasn't You it? are correct. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who wow. then later, after his great career with the uh, Rangers, uh, ended up uh, beating the North Stars a couple of series, didn't he, with the Blues? The was best the goalie blue? name was Terry Sawchuk. Yes. Bob Fowler. Oh, yeah. The yeah. great Bob Fowler covered the Red Wings for the Royal Oak Tribune. You know, mm-hmm. he's covered the pro sports. Said Terry Sawchuk was the most embittered, nastiest SOB he ever covered in the life. Every time they asked him to, a question, Good or bad, he'd tell them to go bleep themselves. Everyone who came over there, you're a bunch of parasites and stuff. I mean, yeah. But you couldn't go talk to the other goalie because there wasn't one. You know? Right. <laughs> he was great, though, supposedly. Yeah. But there were six of them. Who was the Toronto goalie? Ooh. It was Sawchuck. Sawchuck. Uh, Glenn Hall. Glenn Hall was in uh, Chicago. Cheevers. Gary no, Cheevers. I don't think. I think Cheevers was later, though. Okay. Cheevers was later. Jacques Plante. Mm. Yeah, uh, we'll have to look that up. I, I don't know. know. Toronto yeah. had a famous goalie too, but yeah. I can't remember. But those guys would play for like eight. They'd be the goalie in one place for like ten years. You know? Right. Right. But then they, what were they skating? Four defensemen and three lines most mm-hmm. of the time. So that game might. Hank have... Basson. No, that's uh... no, that's not it. Gary 50s. Bauman. Yes, 50s? Nah. Gary Bauman. Keep going. Johnny Bauer. Johnny, Johnny Bauer. Johnny yep. Bauer was. Yep. It. Johnny Bauer was, was it. Toronto. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Now look up Boston and uh, New York. Well, it only on no, this New particular. New York was Plant. I have Bauer. No, Hall. Montreal was Jack Plant. Oh, I Bauer, thought. Hall, Plant, Sawchuck, Worsley. Yeah, Gump was the Rangers then in the sixteen league. Okay, was Plant there eventually? I thought he went there eventually. You're right. He was Montreal when. Yeah. He, when in the. Uh, Winning the winning the cup, you know this goalie down at uh, Mankato who's terrific, uh, McKay. Mm-hmm. I think his dad had something in mind when he was born. He named him Dryden. <laughs> really, that's his, that's his name. Yeah, Dryden. Uh, you're you're picking a pretty good one there. So. Ken Dryden was a hell of a goalie. Hey, well, everybody says 
you know, him and Trejack, the all-time two greatest. Yeah, well, yeah. W- would they, would their skill level stand up today? Yes. Right. Well, their Abs- size, Kenny, their size wouldn't. I mean, Gump oh, was, Dryden was big, Patrick. Yeah, Dryden, Dryden was, was big, but I'm talking about the previous generation. Uh, yeah. I think Sawchuck was a fairly good-sized guy, but yeah. Gump was just a stumpy little guy. You know? Yeah. Gump was the Yogi Bear of hockey. Yes, he was. He looked like it. To the, uh, yeah. I don't think he was a loud uh, intoxicant either. I think he just kind of sat there and well, drank it. Kenny brought up tirades. Did we have any NHL coaching tirades? Oh, God. There's got to oh, be sure a thousand of them. There's been thousands of them, yeah. Blair, Blair was famous. You know, Blair had the most famous quote ever. He was mad because the Met Center crowds weren't rowdy enough. And he was quoted in the next day papers. You're just a bunch of phlegmatic Swedes. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And first of all, uh, luckily for him, most Minnesotans didn't know a phlegmatic was good or bad. So uh, <laughs> that would, you know, you're just a bunch of phlegmatic, huh? What was that? How do you spell? You know that? who I bet, Patrick? I bet I bet Herbie had some horrible professional tirades. Oh, I've got, got yeah. one. I, I had it on tape, and the day Herbie died, yeah. I went back up to uh, the studio in Maplewood to look for it. Um, and, and again, I was the in-studio producer for the North Stars that year, and it was after a horrible loss. Oh, somewhere so this in was Canada. a radio interview, huh? Yeah, and okay. this was, and it's a radio interview that never aired. We had a stringer up there, <laughs> and uh, after the game, a horrible loss. This poor stringer went up to Herbie and asked him some innocent <laughs> question. And Herbie just went off. It was three minutes of the f bomb, uh-huh. and it was so funny <laughs> and so outrageous that I had I actually cleaned it up. I put a car horn honk in in place of every f bomb, and played it on the air a number of times. And evidently, a listener recorded it, sent it to KQ, and they ran it on oh, the air. Oh, really? And it was just the world's best tirade ever. And I wish I wish I had it. I've looked well, it wasn't all my as stuff. good as Lee Elias. Come on, maybe no. hockey wise. No, but you come up to me after a bleeping loss and you ask me that kind of bleeping <laughs> question, you dumb bleep. Here, listen to me, bleeper. And he just—it was so good. Oh, I think God, I remember that. Harry, I think I yeah. remember that. Oh, it was Harry, wonderful. He, it, and Herbie I put a was, big. Herbie was so bitter about that season. They ended up with 51 points the year he was here. They had yeah, all those it injuries. It was a brutal year. Yeah, I mean, and it caused a great separation between Louis Sonmore and Herbie that took a long time to get healed. Because mm-hmm. uh, Herbie, you know, they got rid of him after that year. And yeah. uh, he blamed um, Louie and Sonmore for not sticking up for him and stuff what like that. What year was that? Uh, 81, 82. Okay. Yeah. No, 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 no. It was no, later, it was later than, than that. that. Later than did that. He, was, did he coach the Rangers before Star. here? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Yeah, because I didn't start at the station until 86 or so. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was okay. the late 90s, and it, it was Louie was getting ready to resign, you know, and go off and make real money. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, well, when did Norm, Norm bought the team in '90? So it was yeah, before so that. It was late '80s. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was late '80s. Yeah, Normie. Yeah. Uh, they. Uh, it is funny though. We we love them and everybody wants them back. The Wild have been supported so much better, and have been so much more consistent than the North Stars were. It's yeah. amazing. I mean, the North Stars had. Two really long periods of being rotten. Mm-hmm. And, of course, it's easier to make the playoffs now with the, the extra points you get and stuff. And you stay in the – and you, the points look better now because you get the free points and stuff like that. But they were uh, – they had some – the late 80s and the mid-70s, they were horrible. So the, the, the crew that you described in your column uh, recently, how would they have handled being in the bubble together? <laughs> As long as the bubble contained beer, they'd be fine. <laughs> I did like the story. Read story about Moose. Moose Vasco, they're in their woods drinking beer, and they hear this bear crashing through the woods and the branches. And they think they're going to get eaten by a, by a, by a moose. bear. And it's Moose Vasco saying, I know there's beer here, and I need some. <laughs> <laughs> Louie told me that he was in a... That uh, they were getting ready for a playoff game, and uh, they had practice, and then they uh, 
and then like, they're like down down in the hotel bar drinking about seven. And Moose says, "No, the playoff game tomorrow, big game tomorrow. I gotta go up and get some rest." And so he goes. He's he's Louis Moose's roommate. So he goes up there, and Moose is laying there, and he's just kind of watching TV, and he's leisurely, and uh, and all of a sudden he takes a Swiss little sip of beer, and Louis looks over there. He's got a case. <laughs> <laughs> he was taking it easy. He's getting ready for the game. He's got a. You know what else? These guys uh, sneaking in beer and stuff. They they got the uh, they got the talent for drinking it warm. You know, or not. You know, oh. room, you know room temperature. Not. Uh, not. It didn't have to be cold. Yeah, uh, but uh, anyway, oh. uh, it had to be fun, man. Do you think any sport has embraced the modern era more than hockey? Because these stories of today's oh, God. players will never be told. Oh God, no, no. There's, I mean, there's, they're all. They ride their bicycles after a game. They ride the stationary oh, yeah. bicycles well, after a game. All the sports are that well, way. They have yeah, to. I know. They yeah. have yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. I think football players might still be the rounders that they used to be, but uh, because that's the essence of the game is you got to be nuts to play it anyway right but, uh, right but uh yeah i you know i mean baseball those guys uh i think some of these guys are actually professionals now. <laughs> right, right. i gotta go all right. all right i gotta go all right see you this is ricey for my guy mr money talk josh arnold it's deja vu all over again josh has been talking since the beginning of the year that market volatility would be high due to the tweets from the White House in the upcoming election. You need to talk to my guy, Mr. Money Talk, Josh Arnold, especially now that the tweets are flying and the election is approaching. Go see Josh for a no-cost, no-obligation, 48-minute consultation. A common mistake Josh sees during these meetings are 401Ks and IRAs with up to 50% in impaired stocks. To find out if your retirement fund is holding these losers, call Josh at 952-925-5608. Josh is going to give you a straight talk, not sugar-coated advice. Josh Arnold, 952-925-5608. Hi, this is Chris Howard, host of Plugged In with Chris Howard. It's crazy to think that a few weeks ago we were talking about whether or not Tua Tagovailoa should consider retiring after two concussions and worldwide debates on player safety and NFL culpability, Tua has done nothing but go back to work and currently has the Dolphins riding a three-game win streak and one loss behind the division favorite Buffalo Bills. While everyone was yapping about the end of his career, Tua Tagovailoa said he'll decide when it's time. And clearly, he's not ready to hang up the cleats. Hi, this is Chris Howard from the Plugged In with Chris Howard podcast. BetOnline.net is your number one source for betting football and the start of the new basketball season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news podcasts, and in-depth analysis on every game. BetOnline remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting up to the minute scores for every sp- the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including the MLB playoffs, the start of the NHL season, MMA, boxing, and golf. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, where the game starts.